Hello, Jermaine Griggs here, and welcome to another edition of Automation Mondays. This is the weekly video series where I show you a new technique, tip, concept, strategy, and tactic to automate, to systematize, and to put the processes in place to take your business to the next level. And this episode here, will be absolutely no exception. Now, you're probably uh, wondering why I'm in casual clothes. I'm not normally casual in front of the camera. But I thought this week, I said, you know what? One of the things I really stand for is teaching people how to run virtual companies, companies that are leveraged on the internet, that don't take face-to-face -face relations if you don't want to do that sort of thing, that allow you to leverage what you're doing and digitize your, your message and your products. And uh, that's what I do here on the here and play side. It's what I do on the automation clinic side. So I say, you know, this is a business where you can wear what you want. So why would I change in front of the camera. So I'm casual this week. That doesn't mean I'm gonna uh, forsake my, my slacks and my nice button down, but just wanna give you uh, the other vantage point because most guys and gals around here will tell you, you know, he's in workout clothes, he's crossfitting, he's doing the things that he enjoys. And the only time you will see me in black pants is in front of the camera. So the real Jermaine, there you have it. Now this week, I want to introduce the topic it's a numbers game because it really is. And where you can tell the difference between a novice or an inexperienced marketer and someone who really knows what they're doing is when it comes to numbers and the modeling of numbers. You know, I can't tell you how many people come to me or I talk to on the phone and they say, well, you know, I'm gonna get this many people to my website and if just half of them buy, you know, we're gonna be rich, right? And therein lies the problem. You know, people don't understand how this works and how it works online and in any type of direct response marketing. What, what do you mean when you say direct response marketing? Let's put that down first, right? Direct response marketing, right? That means you're going directly to the consumer, right? You don't have these uh, mediums and channels in between, like the stores or, you know, putting them uh, on shelves and things like that. You are selling to the end user that is going to enjoy and benefit from your product. And you're doing that directly. Before the internet, you put ads in magazines. You still do that today. I'm not saying we it's a zero-sum game. But uh, newspaper ads and you'd send direct mail. Uh, you know, people would, would call you, you know, telecommunications, and these are ways to get to the consumer directly. And those numbers don't work like 50%, 40%, 30%. We make money from most people not taking action. And when we say most people, we're talking about 98 out of 100 people not taking the intended action, right? So to fail... 98% of the time can change your life in this game. So the first thing to realize is that most people do not take the intended action. So when we talk about conversion rates, if you want to be in a conversation at a seminar or something and actually know what you're talking about, never say something like, if half of my people buy, <laughs> because it just doesn't work that way. If you can get half of your people to buy at a respectable scale, uh, you, you're going to be very, very wealthy because the numbers don't pan out that way. What you will find is 1% of people buying, 2% of people buying. I have a webinar running now, and it's at about 3.7%, and that is out of this world. That is enough to scale to the moon, to live your wildest dreams if that holds true as more and more traffic or eyeballs, as I say, hit the page. And, and that's another thing to note that as you expand out, right? So, you know, a lot of people say, oh, I have 10% conversion rate. And that's to their warm, small list, right? So if you can get a uh, thousand people to the page from your list and your conversion rate is, is X, Right? First of all, realize that's warm traffic. Warm means they know who you are. They're coming from your list. Maybe they bought from you before. Warm and hot, that is. right. But as you want to scale your business to what we call cold traffic, 
All right, so understand the temperature gauges of your traffic and the people that are exposed to your messages. As you want to expand and reach the world, well, that conversion rate is going to change. That 10% uh, is going to drop down to, you know, hopefully if you can get 1% to 2%. And a lot of people, you know, half a percent, a quarter of a percent, and some can't make it work at all. So it's important to realize that, number one, conversion rates are relative. Conversion rates are relative. So this has many implications, right? You're talking to another marketer and they're telling you their opt-in conversions or their, uh, that's how many people get on their list you know, from, let's say, Facebook or Google. They land on your landing page. You give them a free offer for something, a report, a video, a webinar, a series, a podcast, what have you. Some, you know, something in exchange. You know, they're giving you something, albeit their free email address, but you're giving them something in exchange. Gone are the days where join my newsletter or get updates on my website. I mean, those days are gone. People aren't excited to give their email address out like they were in the infancy stages of the internet, right? So when you're talking to someone and they're saying, oh yeah, I get 40% opt-in or you know, someone else says, I get 20% opt-in. Now, those are numbers that are more plausible, right? Because we're not talking about sales conversion. We're not talking about money exchanging hands. So, you know, if they're coming to my website and they're landing on my landing page, for that, it's not unlikely to be in the 20% range, right? One out of five, 20 out of 100, up to, you know, I know some people that can get 50% opt-in rates on cold traffic. But it's important when you're talking to someone to be comparing apples to apples, oranges to oranges, being on the same uh, playing field, if you will. Because if they're talking about sending an email out to their list, their list landing on the opt-in page, and then they're saying they're getting a 50% opt-in rate, well, that's one thing. That's a warm list. And one of my commandments, I have this 10 commandments of automation, I would never collect information that I already have from somebody I just won't do that. That's a cardinal sin to me. To take an email that's already on my list, and instead of just sending them straight to the sales tool, the media, the video, the VSL, having them go to an opt-in page and then having to opt-in, I've made this sin before, don't get me wrong, but why do that? So to even be bragging about your 50%, you know what I'm hearing as an experienced marketer at this 16 years? Oh, you just took half of your traffic from a source that you already own and you just cut it in half and you're bragging about that? You're bragging about your 50% opt-in rate? How about 100% if you get rid of that stage? So the opt-in is for the cold person. The opt-in is for the person that does not know you. And when that is true, 20% should be your benchmark. So let's put a 20% there. And in the big scheme of things, that's still most people not doing what you want. 80% are leaving in this example. You know, 98% in this example, and hopefully you've captured some of that, you know, you've, you've captured them and, um, and you can follow up with them, but most people are not buying from you. And what it reminds me of is baseball, right? Some of the, and I don't watch baseball like that, but I mean, some of the best batters in the world, right? What is a good percentage in baseball? I'm told it's a 300 or, 30%. That means 70% of the time when that pitcher throws the ball, for you to either strike or miss it or what have you or not swing at all, however they calculate it, most of the time, and we're talking about the best in the world, you know, they're failing seven out of 10 times. And to succeed three out of 10 times uh, is a good thing. And if you think about sports, see how relative the numbers are? Uh, how different the numbers in basketball, a free throw percentage uh, would be something totally different because you're aiming at a stationary post. So you, you really got to look at the objective. You got to look at the context. You got to understand that, hey, 20% to code traffic, uh, that's scalable. That's a good thing, right? And you can make your numbers work off of that. Um, another thing where you go wrong is... Uh, someone gets referral traffic or they get JV, joint venture traffic from other people. You know, you go out to someone else in your industry and say, hey, can you mail for me? And they do. 
Um, and if you've read the book uh, Robert Cialdini's Influence, you know how social proof and authority and those things work. If I'm sending, in, sending out an email for you and I already have the relationship with my existing list, of course, your opt-in rates are going to be higher when those folks land on your page. You're borrowing some of my authority. And you're borrowing the, some of the relationship that I have with this existing list. So even there, you got to understand what you're comparing. So when it comes to, to comparisons and things like that, really cold traffic uh, and when we say cold, we mean they don't know you from Tom, Dick, or Harry, as my mom would say, right? That is pretty much the best way. That is the bottom denominator uh, if you really do want to compare numbers. Cold traffic, scalable traffic. So I'm not talking about 10 visitors because you know, the numbers can be great with 10 visitors, even 100 visitors, spending $100 on Facebook. Because um, if you don't understand, Facebook's kind of like a, I don't like to use this analogy, but kind of like a drug dealer where they give the best product first because they want to hook you. And so if you go on Facebook and you wonder, yeah, with my first $10 in ad spend, I always seem to do well. Even the next $50, I do well. Heck, even up to $100, I do well. But it seems like when I try to get into that $1,000 territory or I try to spend X per day, things just fall apart. And there's many reasons for that. But one of them is you start getting to the real market or you start getting to that wider span. Of course, like just shaving the cream off the top, you know, the, the best of the best prospects that Facebook's going to feed you. Yeah, you're going to have great opt-in rates with them. But if you really want to scale your business and you want to get past test traffic and you really want to reach the, the masses in your marketing, your target market, um, then it's going to be a little different. And you're really going to have to pay attention to your KPIs, which I talked about in a past Automation Mondays. Those are your key performance indicators. And I always use the analogy, I'm not a pilot either, but I like analogies from different places, whether I'm into those things or not. But I remember learning about a pilot being instrument rated. And, you know, from what I understand, I can get in a plane and take lessons and I can be able to fly myself in a small plane and, and that sort of thing, right? Uh, and get my license or whatnot. But then there's this designation where it's the next level where I'm able to fly a plane without looking out that front glass. And there's many reasons for that, maybe to fly other people, but just my view may be obstructed. I may be flying in the clouds or I may not be able to see my way here. And you want to be able to fly that plane by the numbers, by the indicators, by all this other stuff uh, around and being able to know that you're upside forward. You know, you're not spiraling out of control because you could be and not even knowing it uh, in a plane. And that's the same thing with your numbers. It is a numbers game. So 2%, how do you build a business on 2%? Well, that's a, that's a good question. 2% buying, right? Well, it comes down to the numbers. So for example, at the time of this, you know, I'm spending about, let's say $2,500 a day uh, on one of my webinars uh, for Automation Clinic uh, a day on Facebook, right? And how the numbers would work for that is, you know, you want to keep your leads, right, under $8. So we call that CPL, right? So you got a CPL of $8. That means 100 visitors are going to cost $800, right? And... So that's the first thing to realize, how much you're paying uh, per lead, right? Because it starts there. And we'll take this metric here, right? If 20%, you know, are opting in, so that tells me, well, if 100 is only 20%, it's 20% of what? It's 20% of 500, right? So that means that I'll have to get 500 visitors to my site. And so we must ask ourselves, okay, then what does our cost per click have to be in order to have our cost per lead at $8? And we know that that's, you know, 20%, right? So divide that eight by five and you'll get your answer. So with these numbers, right, 
it's going to be about $1.60, all right? So $1.60 per click will get me 500 clicks for that same $800, right? And I don't have to pay the $800 again. All I'm doing is now, right, out of that same 500 clicks for $800, right, I'm able to get 20% of them, right, or 100, right, that's 20% of 500, to give me their email address for the same $800, right? And that's how you get your cost per lead. Now the name of the game is, well, what are you selling? And how much does it cost? If I'm selling something for $47, these numbers do not work. You cannot have a CPL of $8 selling something for $47 because herein lies that whole numbers game thing. Now an amateur would say, huh, well, if I'm paying $800, for 100 leads and half of them buy. See, that's where I'm like, I'm, I start laughing because I'm like, half of them are not going to buy. Even if a quarter of them buy, Jermaine, a quarter of them aren't going to buy. So you have to be able to do these numbers on 2%. So if I have 100 emails and now it's time for them to see the offer, they've given me their email address, now it's time for the show. It's time to separate the series, the ones that are going to take me up from it uh, for the offer versus those that will not, at least right now. But we still have their email address. Keep in mind. Talked about that in another video. So what does that mean? That means two are going to buy. And we haven't even gotten into price. Price plays a huge role, and you're going to see why. And this is going to be called my CPA, my cost per either acquisition, cost per action, and there's many ways to, to reference it, right? So what is that going to be? Well, if you take the $800, you assume a 2% conversion, right? Just pretty much uh, that $800 is going to create two sales. That means my CPA is $400. You, you get how I did that? Rewind this if you have to, if you're, you're new to these kinds of number crunching exercises. So that means if I want to make money, assuming these things are true, I got to be selling something that costs more than $400 for the end user. And here's another trick. Even if you break it into payments, this is where a lot of amateurs get go wrong. Yeah, maybe they're selling something for $1,000. So check, you know, $400 creating $1,000. I do that all day. Where, where else can you go do that in the real world? Stock market, you can't do that every single day. Like clockwork, you make this work. Um, even real estate. I mean, obviously real estate has its benefits. I'm a total fan, appreciation, depreciation, all that stuff, cash flow. But on a daily basis, putting in 400, getting out 997 and repeating that, I don't think you can do it there either. All right, so you got to have something selling for over 400. And even if you allow payments, all right, you want to make sure that the first payment is multiples of, of that. Or at least, you know, if I'm doing something for $1,000, the first payment needs to be 497, 500. At least I'm making $100, you know, because some of those people will go on and default and you got to work those numbers as well. But if you're getting a full $997 or $1,000, all right, well, that's going to be, like I said, for that same $800. Remember that. The $800 doesn't change. This is the same $800, all right? These are our costs per whatever the action is. So $1.60 for the click, $8 for the lead, $400 for the action, right? And so at the end of the day, if these numbers hold true on a $9.97 product, a $1,000 product, $800 is creating around $2,000. And I'll take that. And that's at 2%. Now, if you want to get excited about the future, you can say, and I've got 98 more people that through follow-up, this is where Jermaine also comes in. Uh, this is where my, my strategies of follow-up and automation and you know, making sure you know, they're seeing videos and, and things like this and nurturing material and educational material. It is, is it likely that you can get some of that 98 that didn't do anything 
Well, they did. Okay, let's give them some credit. They gave us their email address. But in the scheme of the big scheme of things, they didn't do anything monetarily. Can we get four or five of them over time? Absolutely. Can we get up to 10 of them? Can our conversion rate really be 10% over the span of a, a year with this same cohort or even sooner? Absolutely. But we don't bank off of those things. Those are long term numbers, right? And we want to set ourselves up to win. So we want our short term to be paying for itself, knowing that everything that comes in on the long term, as we're continuing to recycle this, this is working daily for us. Then we've got every, for every 100, we've got 98 coming into the machine, and they're going to convert at different times, a small percentage of them. So it just works. This is how you scale. This is how you set yourself up for success. But it's in being a numbers champion. It's in being someone who loves the numbers. I submit to you, you cannot be a successful entrepreneur and not love the numbers. Um, You can, and you can outsource these kinds of things, but I find, my personal opinion at, at least, is those who really get the numbers, those who are religious about the numbers, those who track the numbers, those who try to manipulate the numbers, and see, people think that's a bad word. No, it's a good word in in this context because once I have my base, I can say, well, what can happen in this scenario? to to up things, right? Because this could be a starting point, but really in reality, my numbers don't look like this. I'm getting 400, you know, percent, give or take, uh, R-O-A-S. What is that? R-O-A-S. That's return on ad spend. So when I look at what I give Facebook and what I make back in revenue, you know, uh, 100%, that's just breaking even. I give Facebook $100, I'm getting back $100. 200%, now you've turned a dollar into two. 300%, you turn a dollar into three. And you got to take out the dollar you spent, right? Return on ad spend is just straight how much you got in, how much you, you brought out, right? It's not net, right? But um, you can clearly see how to formulate net, right? So if you got 400% return on ad spend, we'll take out the 100% ad spend and you're left with having tripled your money. And this is something that can happen for you. But in this Automation Mondays, I just want to encourage you, learn the numbers, understand how they work realistically. And in different environments and contexts, they work differently. My mentor, some of you will remember him, God bless him. Um, Corey Rudel. He's not with us. He passed away in 2005. But I got a great opportunity to be friends with Corey. I bought his course in 2001 when I was figuring this thing out in my dorm room. Maybe you've heard my story of transformation there. And uh, we sparked up a friendship. And a few years later, I started speaking for Corey's company while running my hear and play on weekends. um, I had a knack for speaking. So Corey would... uh, run seminars featuring me. We go to different cities, many gurus you know today. I won't mention their names, but they were in my audience as newbies in 2004. And uh, and I even knew the metrics for that environment then. Our goal, because at the end of the seminar, I would sell Corey's coaching program, and he had all these products that totally like were a, way ahead of his time. I mean, he was doing autoresponders in 2001, even before Infusionsoft and Active Campaign and these things. So I would get on stage and I would sell these things and his coaching at the end. And guess what the number was? $1,000 per head. As a 21, 22 year old, I knew how to follow the numbers. Way before Facebook would come on the map, way before I would be understanding these sorts of things in my own business, I knew that if there were 100 people in the audience, uh, this was $100,000 in sales day. If they filled the room with 300 people, this was a $300,000 a day, if my numbers held true. So the metrics change. $1,000 a head for seminar, live environment. Uh, I don't know what they are these days, but that was our number. And that was several years ago, right? Email, 20 to 40%, like I said, to get them to opt in. Sales conversion, one, two, 3% will change your life. I have some clients, we've gotten up to 7 to 8% on webinars. I mean, their return on ad spend is crazy. 
Um, but we don't bank off of these types of outlier situations. We go with our conservative projections, we model it out, and then we do what we have to do uh, to bring these numbers into fruition. Sometimes you'll hit it out of the park. Other times you have to go back to the drawing board with your webinar. You have to go back to the drawing board with your opt-in page. But that's where you're constantly testing. That's where you're constantly looking for improvement. And it doesn't have to be these big things, you know. Find a lot of entrepreneurs have to hit it out of the park. You know, I talked about that baseball analogy. How often is a, a grand slam or, or where, you know, they hit it out of the park and then all the people run in? Those don't happen all the time. But I know far too many people looking for that all or nothing victory when it's just continuous, constant improvement. I remember reading a book about Kaizen. Look that up and, and read about that philosophy. K-I, no, K-A-I-Z-E-N. And it applies very much so in what we do here. All right, so it's a numbers game. You better believe it. I'm Jermaine Griggs. I'm signing off for this episode of Automation Mondays. I'll see you next week.